Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at repairing this vintage Ulysses 31 bendy toy. Now, this was very kindly sent in recently by a Patreon of mine, Vander. Uh, he thought it would be a fun project. And I really do like uh, Ulysses 31, but the toys are incredibly hard to find here in the UK. So this is one of only a couple of toys I now have in my collection, but it needs a bit of work. This is made by a toy company called Seji. Uh, it's a bendy toy, so it's made out of rubber and it's got bits of metal inside it so you can sort of bend it into uh, posed shapes which often causes issues over the years because those bits of wire break and in this one it has broken in a few places but it's still in good enough condition that it's worth saving and making looking nice to uh, display again so let's take a closer look at what's wrong with it and we'll work out some ways to fix it so what is wrong with Ulysses well when he arrived here he was incredibly dirty I've actually given him a bit of a clean already and he's looking a whole lot better there's still a few marks that we need to uh, get rid of which we're going to be doing with some lighter fluid and a bit of kitchen towel but overall he's actually not looking too bad now the big issues with him are is that there is a split right there in his pelvis you can see it's split right across the middle and right round to the back so we need to uh, reattach that some of the wires inside his legs are broken but I'm not going to bother trying to repair those I think even trying to get new wire in you would end up damaging this toy more so we're just going to have to live with that uh, he's missing his cape he should have a, a vinyl cape that wraps around he's also missing a gem that should be on the front which is actually what holds the cape in place so we need to make that uh, and then yeah just generally a good clean and a tidy up I think we can actually make this look pretty reasonable he is an odd looking figure and I think many people say yeah he's a very strange looking figure but if you collect Ulysses uh, toys there are so few around it's nice to have anything and as I say this is one of only three uh, Ulysses toys I have so I just want to get it looking as uh, good as I can to go with the uh, rest of my collection first thing I'm going to do is actually tidy up some of these uh, scuff marks as I say I've already given this a good clean and most of the grime has come off just using hot soapy water and a toothbrush and then I also used a magic eraser which is very good at getting some of the grime out of this uh, rubbery material but you can see there are still some scuff marks and sort of marks all over his body and for that I'm going to be using some uh, lighter fluid so I've just got a tin of lighter fluid here I've got a bit of kitchen towel I'm going to put some of the lighter fluid on that and that gets scrubbing on those marks and hopefully it will remove the rest of the ones that the soap and water didn't get rid of. That looks a whole load better. It's managed to get rid of all of the marks and scuffs that were, were sort of left on the rubber. As you can see, the uh, tissue is now pretty filthy. So lighter fluid has managed to uh, yeah, clean a lot of that up. We can now get on with uh, fixing some of the bigger issues. I think we'll start with this split on the pelvis. To fix the split pelvis, I'm going to be using super glue, but I'm going to be applying it with uh, one of my pin tools. So this is a pin in an old paintbrush handle. That way I have complete control as to where it goes because I only want to put a very small amount into the sort of split there and then push it together and I'm going to do it in a few stages I'm not going to do it all in one go because the split goes all the way around and I want to make sure it's as neat as possible I'm only really intending to make this toy displayable again so it doesn't need to be massively strong but I think this will actually form a pretty sort of strong bond anyway and it will hold everything back together so at least he looks complete again so let's get some uh, super glue just onto a piece of paper and then we can use this to apply it I will just gently pick up some of the super glue on the pin and then apply it exactly where I need it and uh, yeah it should work really well
And there you go, that has worked really well. You can see where the split was, but it's now sort of firmly held back together and it goes all the way around. Obviously, as I say, this is uh, going to be just for display purposes. If you pull the legs apart, this would just tear again. Uh, there's no way of stopping that. So uh, just gluing it like this is enough that it, when I put it on display, it doesn't look like there's a big split down the front. And um, yeah, I think most people wouldn't even notice that that had been damaged. So let's now move on to uh, making a replacement cape for him. Now we come on to the missing cape and for that I'm just going to have to make a pattern. I haven't been able to find an original. I don't actually know anyone else who owns this toy so uh, using a few photos I should be able to make something that looks pretty good. I have a couple of photos here that I've found of the cape on the figure and from this I'm going to draw a pattern. I can take a few measurements because you can see exactly where uh, the cape lines up with everything and how sort of far down his legs it goes. So really I'm just going to sort of wing it I suppose just to make something based on these images that I have and then I'll do a quick test run and see if it actually fits. Uh, just cutting it out of a piece of plain paper here. If it does all work I'm thinking to actually use a piece of vinyl from a uh, blow up beach toy because I think that will look pretty close. The original is clearly made out of a relatively thick sheet of vinyl so a beach toy may be a little bit thin and it's also uh, different colours. One side is white and one side is purple. In fact you can see on this image that we've got it uh, with the purple side on the top. It should actually be the other way around. You can see uh, in the package version here that the purple's on the inside. I haven't been able to find any purple vinyl so I'm just going to make mine out of a, a white vinyl but it will still look pretty good. So um, let's work out this pattern first and um, see what we can do. And here is my template. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad at all. I was not sure about the bottom edge on the photos. It looks like it's wavy, but when I cut a wavy line into it, it just looked a bit silly. So I've sort of straightened that out for the moment. This is still made out of paper, so let's just test it and see if it actually fits. If it does, we'll cut a proper version out of some of the uh, vinyl that I've got. So let's put that on. That should sort of go underneath that little hole on the front. We've got to make a, a gem that goes in there and then it folds down the back. And there we go. I think that actually uh, fits pretty well. It's uh, very close to the original uh, that I was sort of basing it on from that image. So um, yeah, that's really good. That is just my paper template. Now we need to cut this out properly. So I bought myself a very cheap blow up beach toy. These cost a few pounds on eBay and this one had a multiple different color panels, which is why I was hoping there was going to be a sort of a pinky purple in there. In the photos uh, sort of on eBay, it did actually look like there was a sort of a nice sort of light pinky purple but when it turned up it's all really bright garish color so I'm just going to have to go and make a one out of white so I've cut the white panel out which is here and I've given that a very gentle iron with a low temperature iron just to flatten it and take out any of the wrinkles that you can see here and I'm now going to place this onto there draw around it with a pencil and we'll cut that out and uh, try that on but yeah I'm very pleased actually with how that's looking as I say the original should have sort of a, a pinky purple on the inside but even in white that's going to look pretty nice and then we'll make a little red gem there to hold it in place but yeah very happy with that so far so uh, let's get cutting and uh, we'll make a vinyl version to test on the figure.
So there we go, that is the vinyl version. Let's try this on the figure and see how that looks. It should hang a lot better. The paper is obviously fairly stiff paper, so this needs to be held in place there, which we will sort out in a minute, and then it should hang down the back. Yeah, that's looking really nice. Very happy with how that's turned out. Uh, this is a very cheap way of buying this vinyl. I don't know of any sort of sources of uh, sort of rolls of this vinyl. So for me, this is the only way I can get it. If someone actually knows a place where you can buy sort of rolls of uh, coloured vinyl, do let me know. But for me at the moment, the uh, cheap beach toys is my sort of go to for uh, getting this vinyl. So there you go. That's Ulysses with a cape. We now need to sort out the little brooch. And for that, we're going to have to make something out of some uh, styrene sheet and then paint it to be the uh, correct colour. Now we come on to the missing brooch, the little gem or whatever it is at the front. You can see that's roughly what it should look like. This is the best photo I have. So it's fairly simple. It's sort of a square shape, sort of stuck on top of each other with a few little bits of detail. And I think I can make something out of some scraps of styrene. So I have my off cuts of styrene bag here. There's various thicknesses from sort of two mil, three mil, one mil, all sorts of thicknesses. So I'm going to use those to sort of make the basic shape. And then I found this styrene rod that I have, which is 2.5 millimeters in diameter and that fits quite snugly in the hole on the front of Ulysses so uh, that's how we're going to attach it. I'll make a little brooch and I'll stick some of this rod on the back of it. We can then paint it and push it into the hole and I think it will look you know pretty close so um, yeah I've just got to try and make something that looks like that out of my bag of scraps. <laughs> this is what I've made. It's fairly crude but it sort of gets the basic shapes of that little brooch and as you can see I've just stuck it to that 2.5 millimeter rod for the moment uh, and I've left the rod long so that I've got something to hold on to while I paint it which is what I'm going to do now. I've uh, gone into my paint selections and I found this uh, game color which is called bloody red which is quite a nice sort of vibrant red so I'm just going to give it a couple of coats of that. Once that's dried I will then uh, give it a coat of a satin varnish. I can then chop off the back of this and we can actually fit it on the figure but uh, yeah while I'm painting I thought it'd be a good idea just to leave this rod long so I didn't get paint all over my fingers. So uh, let's get this painted up and then we can test it on the figure. The paint's now had time to dry and I'm thinking that's looking not too bad at all. By the time we uh, sort of trim off the post and fit that to the figure I don't think you'll uh, notice. So let's just cut this post down. It doesn't need to be very long at all. It's really only a couple of millimetres. So I'm going to sorry, three millimetres. That should do. And we can uh, put this on the figure. So we need to pull his cape down so it's just below that hole. Then we'll take the newly made little brooch and we can push that in. And that should hold everything in place, which it does. That is looking really nice. Very pleased with how that's turned out. As you can see, it's not uh, perfect, but it just uh, makes this figure look a whole lot better. It just looked a bit empty without that cape and certainly without that brooch and a sort of little hole in the middle. It looked like something was missing. So making something fairly simple out of some styrene sheet and painting it red really just uh, gives that the, the look that I'm going for. Just not perfect, 
but not incomplete. And there we go, that is it for this project. I turned what was a fairly scruffy and broken figure into something that is really quite nice and displayable. It's by no means perfect, but that doesn't matter for my collection. Uh, the wabby-sabby nature of it, it just makes it look really nice. It's clearly had a life before it arrived here, but it's still very nice to look at. If you need to make a cape for your own Ulysses, I will scan this in and make a proper pattern available on uh, toyploy.com. So go there and download that. I do need to say a massive thank you to Evander who very kindly sent this in. Uh, these uh, Seji figures, are really not very common here in the UK at all. Uh, they were released in France and that's where you tend to find them but just getting them here in the UK does seem to be uh, really hard work so a massive thanks to him for sending this over. Even in the state it was in I was really excited to have it because as I say I don't have that many Ulysses uh, figures of toys in my collection so one more like this is just absolutely amazing. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and if you really enjoyed it then why not think about becoming a Patreon or YouTube channel member. You get early access to all of my restoration videos and you get access to an exclusive series of videos called On The Cutting Mat. So why not give that some thought and thanks for watching. Okay, hold it there. Let's uh, go back to this because it's now a couple of weeks later and I just wasn't happy with the, how this cape looked. The original cape clearly has a wave along the bottom of it. So I found a few more images and I've done a few more sort of test versions. I did one with a simple wave and I've now done one with a much more complicated wave with a key piece in the middle. And this is as close as I can get to that original. So I've recut my cape and as you can see that does look a whole lot better, which means I've also now updated the pattern that I've put on toyploy.com. So if you're going to make this cape yourself, it now has that wave at the bottom. I just think that looks a whole lot better. Sometimes with projects you know you sort of finish it and then a few weeks later you'll look at it and think ah, that's not quite right and that's what I've done in this case. So he has now been updated and that does look a lot better. I'm still searching for the right material but for now Ulysses is good enough to go back on my shelf here at Toy Ploy. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos.